Ryobi's releasing their largest chainsaw yet, a 20 inch powered by their 40 volt batteries. This is the brand new Ryobi 40 volt HP brushless 20 inch rear handle chainsaw. It should be released in May of 2023. Now, here's the claim. They claim it's equivalent to 50cc gas power. Now, we don't have a 50cc gas power, but we do have a 60cc gas powered chainsaw. This is the Husqvarna Rancher 460. It's a saw that's been around here for years. Got a pretty sharp blade on it, and we're gonna do a little bit of comparisons with these. But first, let's dig into the features of this guy then we'll take them both out and see what we think. So in the box here is the Ryobi RY405110, which would be the kit form, or uh, the RY405011BTL, which would be the bare tool. So this is their HP, 40 volt HP brushless, 20 inch bar and chain chainsaw. Obviously rear handle chainsaw is pretty long fellow, which we would expect it to be because it's bearing a 20 inch bar on this, supposedly capable of a 36 inch cut. So we will test that out here in a few moments. Pretty cool case. I wanted to kind of show this. I, I, I like the fact when a, when a chainsaw comes with a case uh, because it's just a great place to keep it as well. And I like the fact that I, I see that there's a place that this battery actually locks into place. So if I want to get that battery out, it's not just loose. I actually have to depress the tab to release it and you'll hear it click when it goes in. So it locks into place. You can also keep one in the saw as well. So you could keep a backup battery as well as the battery in the saw, which by the way, if you're going to store a battery in the saw, be sure that chain brake is on as well as I'd probably recommend just go ahead and click it out. So it's, it's not actually engaged where it can just kind of store in there but then it's not actively, you know, engaging the actual tool. Otherwise, if you just got one, you can clip it in here and you're good to go. looks like we have room for keeping some oil or anything else in there as well. And this all closes up nice and tight. You have a door that opens up here and then the saw just lifts out. And then obviously you can pull the, the bar cover off as well. So let's slide off the bar cover as we mentioned we get a 20 inch bar and chain which i believe it's running a looks like a 3 8 050 chain uh, which is pretty typical on these uh, electric battery powered saws and uh, so anyway 3 8 050 and i believe it's a 70 link chain we'll pull the bar off here in a moment should be able to have some markings on there where we can actually see that uh, but just from from knowing these things i'm pretty sure that's what we have here I do not have any specs on RPM or chain speed, which kind of bothers me. I like to at least know where we're at as far as uh, chain speed goes. I like to see RPM and then I like to also see uh, what the actual feet per minute is on the, or feet per second at least, on the, the chain speed as well. Can't calculate that right now. Um, looks like pretty simple controls on this. We have a chain brake that's... I believe it's a mechanical, feels like it, a mechanical chain brake, so it's not electric. And then we have a simple lockout trigger lockout right here so slide this back on the top pull the trigger and you're ready to go so once that battery's in there you pull this back pull the trigger and it's going to go there's no cranking up starting up button to turn on button to push anything like that so again make sure you're utilizing this chain brake to make sure you're not uh, spinning that blade until you are ready uh, we get a translucent tank here i like that so we can easily see our oil our bar oil level so I'd like to see that. And then I could, I've already spotted the scrunch back here on the back of the tool. So it looks like you can pull that out and have use of that scrunch to take out your spark plug. And oh, sorry, no spark plug on this model. Uh, no, but anyway, so there is your, uh, for your bar retention there. And then as far as tightening the chain as well. And as I expected, so there's our 3 8 uh, 70 link chain. And I'm sure that's an 050 chain. So 3 8 050 70 link chain should be able to get that most places on Amazon or in stores and Home Depots uh, to be able to buy those. And those should be able to cross over into Oregon and, uh, and different typical uh, bar and chain providers. Love to see that we have a double bar nut retention, as well as I noticed the, uh, the metal bucking spikes as well up on the other side over here, but we do get metal bucking spikes. 
I hate plastic ones. I think, you know, if you're going to have plastic ones, just don't have them. Um, and, you know, a lot of saws don't really need bucking spikes, but when you get into a 20 inch model, you will utilize those. So I like to see that and I like to see their metal. Let's pull off this case and see what we have underneath here. Okay, it looks like our tensioning stud is here on the cover. So that little stud right there is going to slip right here in the bottom side of this, uh, of this bar. And that's what's gonna provide that sliding back and forth when you're turning that screw right there, little pinion that's going to push that bar out to tighten things up, pull it back in to loosen things up. Something interesting here, um, breaking outside of the typical TTI, Ryobi Rigid um, Milwaukee fashion. So one, two, three. I'm looking here at the, at the sprocket. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I believe there's usually six teeth on there. So we got a seven tooth sprocket. That may be common, um, but I don't believe so. I believe that's a different size than typical. So seven tooth sprocket here. And this is our clutch bell. You can see spinning around. And by the way, there's a ring that runs all the way around this bell and you'll see how I can spin this here. And when I lock that out, that locks out that bell. So that's our mechanical brake on that chain, the mechanical brake on that clutch and sprocket right there. So that's what stops everything. And by the way, right here, this little oval here, there's a rubber seal. That's where the oil comes in from the tank and actually oils the chain and that oil comes passes through this little hole right here and oils that slot and the chain carries that around which by the way as you're using this and there we go there's the 050 chain gauge i told you it's 050. anyway um so as you use this so let's say you use this four or five times take the blade off sharpen the chain i said the blade take the bar and chain off sharpen the chain flip your bar over and then run it this way and it's absolutely capable of doing so these two holes are identically the same so then all of a sudden this hole that was originally oiling it is now going to have the uh, the little pin that actually slides it for tensioning and then this top one will be the oiler now but these are made to do that you want to continue flipping this every four or five uses continue flipping it and this will keep this bar from wearing out and really lengthen the service life life of that we just want to make sure that you turn your chain over when you do that, so you're not cutting with the chain backwards. Just make sure your chain stays in track as you're tightening that up. There you go. Now your first time using this, typically a good rule of thumb is in the middle of the bar to pull this down and you know, with, with decent tension, be able to see the top of those teeth. Now I will recommend the first time you use this, probably one a little bit tighter than that because it's going to stretch right out of the gate, especially being so long and being so new, that new chain again is going to stretch. So I would say, make sure it's still covering part of those teeth, but you don't want to put a whole lot of tension trying to pull that down either. So I think that's good right there. Lock this bar out. And again, you may want to check that after you cut it, you know, two or three cuts, take the battery out, check the tension of the chain and give it a little tighten because as I mentioned, out of the gate, that new chain is going to stretch. Now what comes in the kit is the eight amp hour, 40 volt lithium battery. That's what we're gonna run in this. They claim up to 200 cuts. I believe that's in four by four pine. We are not gonna be cutting four by four pine. We're going to cut some real stuff uh, with this saw. So let's go ahead, we'll put some oil in the tank and uh, we will throw the battery in here and let's go cut some wood. We'll go ahead and oil this up. Yeah, really easy to see that. I'm sure now once that gets dirty, it won't be so easy to read anymore, but I'd like to see those translucent tanks. Okay, this shouldn't really stretch the legs of this saw, but uh, looks like we got about an eight and a half, maybe probably about an eight inch, yeah, seven and three quarters there. So we'll call this an, an eight inch um, log, which should be able to cut pretty easy. This is some wet uh, Florida oak, a little dry here on the end. You'll see once we get into it, it's definitely still wet. A little bit of a delay and then takes a split second to get up to speed. I'm gonna squeeze the throttle and then start counting, 1,001. So it looks like about a second and a half we're up to full speed, so not too bad from the time you pull the trigger.
Not bad for first cut. So you can see we're definitely getting into wet wood now. And as for that, this thing cuts pretty easy. You can bury, you know, use those bucking spikes to kind of dig in and really bury that blade and get it to start bogging, which I'm sure you heard that a little bit. Uh, but as far as power, it's definitely providing the power to get through. See, now I just stopped it. Let me do it again. So leaning into it, I can definitely stop the saw, which I could stop a gas saw too, um, so I would say moderate pressure to get that to stop. But if you'll just let the saw do the work, it actually cuts pretty well. Okay, so what we have here is another oak that's 28 inches that way, about 26 inches that way. So we're going to call this 27 inches. How's that? 28 one way, a little over 26 the other, 28 that way. So at least a 27 inch diameter and a pretty fresh fallen tree. And we're going to try to cut it. We're going to have to work it carefully from one side and then go over and uh, start the other side. But we're going to time this and then compare it to the Husqvarna. and prime this, choke it, decompression, push the choke in,
chain brake is on. Let me give you a little word of caution when using a smaller bar than what you have as a diameter of a of a tree or limb and uh, like Ryobi's claiming this will cut up to 36 inches and their point is is that basically on this 20 inch bar there's like 18 inches that is exposed and cuttable if you will and you can see it doesn't reach all the way through this is just a 28 inch tree or log and it doesn't reach all the way through well, what can happen is if I'm cutting here and I'm fine, the blade's clear, but once I start getting down in the here, I get into kickback territory, meaning the tip of that blade, that saw is saw blade's turning this way, which means that is gonna wanna shove the tip up. So what can happen is if I'm cutting like this and I get down in here, it can actually kick that saw up and that's where you get a potential to getting hit in the head and the shoulder or whatever, that chain coming back on you. So always have that second hand right here so the idea is if that blade is off and it kicks up that it kicks that blade that break on so if i'm cutting in and it gives a kickback boom that break goes on if both hands are on nice and tight so we've come back over here put a little bit larger log on here it looks like 11 inches that way 10 inches that way so we'll call this two and a half inch So here's the one minute conclusion. Price on this is $379 for the bare tool. $479 with the eight amp hour battery and the charger and the case, that's gonna be the better deal for you. Now, will it handle 36 inch diameter logs? I think that was a bad idea to say that. Can you do it? Yes, is it feasible or does it make sense? Not really, it really struggles to get through there. Now the Husqvarna did too, but again, I didn't even show some of the cutouts that was happening when we were really trying to bury the blade in this. So I don't recommend it for, you know, 30 inch, 28 inch uh, fallen trees or felling a, a 28 inch tree. Will it handle an 18 inch log? Yeah, I think it would be absolutely fine for that 16 inch and smaller logs or limbs. I think it's going to be a great fit for that. 
And when you're looking to say cutting, uh, you know, eight to 10 inch limbs or logs, uh, I would say you're gonna get well over 100 cuts with that eight amp hour battery. Now, when you go into these larger sizes, that just exponentially shrinks that number of cuts. Do we have a science and knowing what that is? No, nobody does. That's gonna differ from tree to tree, from, from wood to wood and from size to size. But definitely in that eight to 10 inch limb or log, I think this is gonna be a great idea for that. You're gonna get well over 100 cuts Definitely for that DIYer or for that homeowner, I don't think the pro is gonna be looking to a saw like this. Look for it in the Home Depot coming up and on homedepot.com. We'll have a link in the description as soon as we have one. Also keep track of us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and even TikTok. And if you don't mind, would you hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't done so already. And by all means, if you hated our video, well, give us a thumbs down. But would you let us know in the comments why? Have a great day and keep smiling.